when we structure a setup fee, we used to charge the setup fee first and then two weeks later charge the first month's management fee, but we stopped doing that. You don't want clients that are really like penny pinching. There's a good healthy amount of negotiating that a good client certainly might come to the table with, and that's fine. If you get involved in the client, you'll usually pick up an intuitive sense over time, you know, seeing the warning signs early on, what types of clients are gonna be bad clients. And I was never so into like people said like, oh, you don't take that client, they're gonna be annoying. I've had a lot of situations where I knew the client was gonna be annoying and I took them. I'm set up to be profitable on a client from day one, and so should you be. You're a service business. You're not making any huge upfront investments to bring on a new client, which, by the way, is why you should not be asking any clients for a long-term contract. Making money is hard, and clients are going to be annoying. Like People are annoying. Siblings are annoying. Everyone's annoying. So you might have clients that you're going to have to deal with, like really painful, frustrating things, but like, deal with it. Like You're in the business of making money for yourself. There is a certain degree of having a structure in place, which also gives you more wiggle room. So if you have a client that asks you to you know, help them out with the setup fee or something like that, you might say, okay, we'll charge the setup fee, you know, seven days before, as opposed to having that as your base policy, right? So always come to the table with like, this is how we typically do it with other clients. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And they might negotiate, but nine times out of 10, they'll pay the setup fee on top of the first month's management fee, especially if you're clear about why you're charging that setup fee. So when would you waive a setup fee? So large clients. So this is very hard because like large clients, it's very subjective. Let me just use Adventure Media as an example. So four years ago, client paying us $1,000 a month was a large client. And today we wouldn't take a client paying us $1,000 a month. So what the definition of large changes and it should hopefully change over time and the definition of small changes over time. But here's what hasn't changed. Large clients know they're your large clients, right? You don't have to ever explicitly say it, they just know. I had the opportunity of pitching a really big deal. So this was a deal that would have been 10 to 15 times the size uh, monthly revenue wise of our biggest client at the time. So it was a big deal. So I just realized like, you know, I went to give them the pitch and it's gonna be a huge amount of money per month. I think it was like a 30 or $35,000 a month proposal. And I got into an argument with somebody else in my company. Well, a healthy disagreement, a pleasant disagreement about charging a setup fee. And I was like, no, no way. And this person I think stood to earn a commission potentially on, on the setup fee. And I said, they're like, well, we should charge a setup fee. And I was like, nope, we're not charging a setup fee. Because that client knew they were they were a large client. And that client knew that we we're gonna put everything into this to make this a long-term relationship. And just charging a setup fee would have seemed petty to me. It would have seemed like it's not appropriate for the nature of what's going on here. And there's just a knowledge of the nature of what's going Going on here, just clients tend to know they're savvy, they pick up on that. So, if it's a really big deal, a really large client, go ahead, wave that setup fee. And you could even say it. I would tell a client, and I've told clients this regularly I was like, you know, this is a really big deal. Your business matters a huge amount to us. We typically charge a setup fee. I'm not going to charge you a setup fee this time because we're just very excited to get this work. And we know that this account will become more and more valuable to us as, as we increase performance by way of being excellent account managers. And it's on that basis that we want to reap the rewards of this relationship and not on just charging you an additional set of fee, which we typically do. And that usually is received very, very well. It's worthwhile showing clients that you know, that they know <laughs> that they're large. And I, like I said, sometimes that setup fee makes, it can make things seem a little bit petty. And just in general, it's like 98% of the time we do charge setup fees. But like I said, sometimes it's better to find that money in the performance and delivery of your service. When you do that for a big deal, it does help to generate a long-term commitment and it's just a better emotional way to start a large relationship. Another way of dealing with a setup fee in certain situations is spreading the setup fee across three months of service. So uh, we've done this regularly. So sometimes a client will tell us like, well, okay, like, you know, what can you do for us in the setup fee? Because it's just like, like a gut reaction for a lot of people. It's a nature. It's like a, it's like a personality thing. So we'll tell a client, like if you give us a verbal commitment for three months of service, we'll split that setup fee over three months. And we have yet to have a situation where the client paid us for one month of service and one third of the setup fee and then left. And of course there are going to be bad eggs. And I've dealt with my share of bad eggs in the past and bad clients and whatever. But like, if you're in this business, you have to realize that, that a small percentage of your clients are gonna be bad actors. And okay, that just comes with the territory. You deal with it, it's water off a duck's back and you move on. But it, that's a good idea. Like, so if a client does ask you what are you gonna do with the setup, you say, okay, can I have a verbal commitment that you're willing to give us three months of service? Um, because that's usually the time it takes to really assess performance. And we've had situations in the past where clients were too eager to meet their ROI goals and they didn't give enough time for the campaigns to really hit their stride and they didn't give enough time for the enough data to be fed into the algorithmic bidding machines we're using. That's what you say. Um, so we'll split the uh, setup fee in three. So that, that works quite well as well.